Welcome to episode 47 of the KubaCast. I'm joined by these fine gentlemen. I'll let them introduce themselves. Let's we'll start with whoever speaks first. And go. Uh, this is Justin Sharp, uh, founder of PureInternet.com, p and And this is Tristan Myman, staff writer of p and And I'm James Higginbotham, and I am actually the substitute substitute host for today. So like any substitute, like a fifth grade substitute, I have no clue what we're supposed to be doing today. So this will be fun. Uh, um, I have the agenda. I have the agenda. They, the students know more than the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the teacher said to give us all A's and all the answers. I'll just leave back and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> like a uh, the, the first thing was talking about Iwata being reelected. Yes, I guess was it during the shareholder meeting back in June ish? Yeah, and he wasn't even there, and they reelected him. Man. Yeah, he's got, he's got such a cush job. Yeah, and apparently his approval rating is a lot higher than it was around this time last year. Yeah, so that's good too. Well, I'm not surprised. It's Mario really Kart on the corner. Everything. <laughs> <clears throat> I guess the question is, I don't know what the question is here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like what do you think is, I guess, the turnaround? Besides Mario Kart, like what steps has Iwata taken this past year to get him to this point? Or get Nintendo to this point? Well, I think E3 was big for them. Um, so I think, you know, and that was just like two weeks ago, so that's probably fresh in uh, investors' minds. They're like, oh, that, I mean, Nintendo had probably the best E3. Uh, and I even saw there was like a poll on IGN where they pulled all of the readers and they. Unanimously, unanimously said that Nintendo had the best E3. Um, you know, even just kind of like objectively, people who don't normally, you know, check out Nintendo stuff were even saying that. So, um, so I, I would say probably maybe everything they had at E3, you know, kind of helped. But I think Mario Kart was a big help. I kind of have to concur with, well, pretty much everything you just said there. I mean, I was, you know, I guess it is biased to say that I was blown away by Nintendo's, you know, <clears throat> presentation at E3, but, I mean, give credit where credit is due. It was absolutely fantastic. I guess the question is, not thinking probably as a, a fan, but what, what do you think investors saw? Because they see things totally different than what we see. Mm -hmm. So they must see a giant momentum swing. For yeah. them to be happy and see, oh, yeah, we're going to get all of our money. Is that yeah. Amiibo? Or they're like, oh, we're going to make a lot of money off of Amiibo. Or, like, what are they, what's the dollar signs in their eyes, I guess? Yeah. Amiibo well, is a big strong one, yeah. Yeah, Amiibo is big. I, I bet, I mean, Smash Brothers is going to be huge. And so to finally get, you know, because investors, you know, like fans were like, okay, when's it going to come out? We don't know when, you know. So to get more. Um, definitive. We have the definitive date for the 3DS version, like October 3rd, I think, um, and then December, you know, holiday or whatever for the Wii U. So I think that helps, and I think it probably just had more. They had more confidence in the Wii U after E3, whereas I feel like before investors and like everybody else, they're like, "Is Nintendo going to abandon the Wii U? Are they going to, you know, come out with something else? Is there, you know, what I mean?" So yeah, I, I think there was maybe more uncertainty, um, but after E3, they're like, okay, we've got solid Wii U games at Nintendo's. You know, they're committed to it. They're you know going full full ahead. There was big momentum. You know, with all the games they announced, uh, the new Zelda game. You know, there's. I feel like they gave they gave people a lot of reasons to uh, to see but the Wii U. You know, as having a good future. So. <clears throat> Yeah, I think it definitely gives uh, investors a good sound, like you know, good sense of faith in it now. Like, uh, maybe this is like, okay, maybe this is the Wii U that you know, maybe people should have seen a long time ago. Or, but either way, I guess you know, better late than never. Mm. But yeah, <clears throat> but yeah, I think a lot of investors are going to be a bit more, um, they're going to be a little bit more calm about it and a bit more confident going into it. Mm -hmm. You know. All right, yeah. <laughs> found it. Kickstarter oh, okay. and crowdfunding. What's your Kickstarter crowdfunding? I guess what was it Mighty Number no. Nine? They're doing a second Kickstarter for a. Is it a comic? Is it a 
animated series or was it a comic series? Yeah, animated series. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's like a cartoon or something that they're yeah. doing with it. So they're going back to Kickstarter for a similar... It's not the same project, but it's a same product, I guess you can say. Right. And yeah. I know the Kickstarter when... I when this one, this one's still going on. And yeah. Yeah. Still, yeah. Because my number nine, that started adjusting when we were at PAX last year. That's when it started. Yeah. And like within, was it within like a day or two? It got fully funded. Yep. Mm-hmm. So it's been maybe about nine months, ten months since it started. Yeah, about like that. I, I think they said they were on track for 2015, middle of 2015, something like that. Yeah. Still sadly, a ways I didn't get a chance. Yeah, sadly, I didn't get a chance to contribute to that one. Yeah. Hmm. Um. I I think it's. You know, anytime you do like a second Kickstarter, I think that kind of raises people's eyebrows. But I'm sure in the video game world, it's a pretty common thing if you're making a game, and you know you've worked on it for a year or something like that. You've run out of money or whatever. You're like, okay, we need to find some new investors. Um, you know, they probably go out and look for some more money. You know, and then they're like, okay, now we have a whole other round of marketing. You know, here's. Uh, we have a release date now. We've got enough money that we can actually publish the game. Um, so I feel like, you know, we're we're seeing more of the process with Kickstarter, and that's what kind of upsets people. They're like, oh, why why should you have to do that? When in reality, game companies probably do that all the time. Um, but I don't know. We're just seeing, you know, more transparency, I guess, with it. <clears throat> I feel like for me, I think it's a bit too soon to already want to go into the world of an animated series. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, this character, we don't even know him. He's not, he, we haven't even played his first game yet. Mm-hmm. So I think jumps, jumping the gun to a animated series is a bit risky. And, I mean, I guess and then someone would say, well, what about Sonic Boom? I mean, it's going to be, what is it? It's going to be a game first, then it's going to be a show? Mm-hmm. It's like it's kind of the same thing, but yeah. But the thing is, we're familiar with Sonic. We're familiar with his character. No one knows how uh, my number nine is going to handle, and we don't know what his character is going to be like. Is he going to be kind of like the old Mega Man, or is he going to be, you know, have a more of a cocky attitude? We, we just don't know. So for me, it's kind of, in almost you could say a little bit indifferent. But if I were to pick something, it would be I think it's a little bit too soon to already want to jump into an animated series. Yeah, I think. The issue people, have, I guess, have is um, when a Kickstarter is done, we the, we, the people who donate money become investors for that project. Mm-hmm. So it's like they're putting, like, hey, we're putting all the, the burden on you to get this Crackling series win. When should it be the company's responsibility? You have a successful Mighty Number no. 9. Why don't you go ahead and make, out of your own pocket, make the cartoon series instead of putting it back on people who already supported you but haven't even got that game yet type of thing. It's like, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of a good, like, they still came out with the 3DS, and then they are like, oh, support the 2DS before the 3DS even came out type of thing. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, we haven't seen the 3DS yet. Yeah. Person type of thing, so. Yeah, I, Tristan made a good point. It kind of muddies the waters a little bit. Like, okay, well, what? You know, is the is the animated series going to be the canon? Is that where the story starts, or you know, is it going to be more, you know, two D animation than the video game? You got the three D, whereas I think Sonic Boom, they're kind of doing the three D animation for both, so it's like mm-hmm. very consistent looks to the characters in the video game and in the animated show. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess sure. we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, that's the big thing. We'll have to wait and see. I guess the biggest thing is, like, has the animated Kickstarter thing already been fully funded, or...? Uh, no, well, I checked it a couple days ago, and it hadn't uh, been yet, but... Oh, okay, because um, if it, I would say if it's, if it's fully funded before, you know, well before the time's over, then I guess, you know, well, it's obvious that people want to see it. And that, I guess, like, you know, that's a good thing, but again, to me, it's just a little too soon for something like that. Yeah. Well, what do you guys think about the state of Kickstarter? Kickstarter now is what? Well, Kickstarter's been around probably for a while, but now it's like really big the last two years. And I don't know if you guys saw the Kickstarter for the potato salad. Excuse me? Yeah, some guy 
started Kickstarter to make a potato salad. Really? Uh, and basically, his, like, I'm looking at his Kickstarter page right now. His Kickstarter is a picture of a potato salad, and all it said was, I'm making potato salad. And it goes, basically, I'm just making potato salad. I haven't decided what kind yet. It's been, he has 23 days left, and he has $42,671 raised. What? $42,000. Yeah. And his initial announcement was, he's making potato salad, he doesn't know what kind. That's all it said. And it was a picture of potato salad. And he and raised over 42000 I think this person, like, I feel like this person could be doing that as, like, maybe to, to show the flaws of Kickstarter or just how, yeah. like, yeah, pretty much. redundant it can be, kind of. Mm-hmm. Like, people will don't sometimes back money for anything as long as it's, he's got such a catchy idea. Even if it's just a dollar, it could still, you know, raise up money. Man, maybe I should do this to, like, you know, get, get some money in. Maybe pay rent. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's... I, I hope it's all a joke, and I hope he doesn't intend to, like, take everyone's money, because then that's just... No, I don't he's, know. He, he sounds like he's planning to make... Like, I think the... the What's the current? Like, uh, one of his updates, like, if he hits, like, if he hit 3,000, which he hit a long time ago, he says, I will run out a party hall and invite the whole internet to potato salad party. Yeah. Wow. And only people doing it $10 above would be allowed. And then he's, I think the one before that, he was going to stream making potato salad. So, like, he's growing it with the Kickstarter, but, like, I think he originally just wanted to make, like, 60 bucks. <laughs> and now he's $42,000 later. And it's great when people can just throw away money, like, it's no problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, I guess, I don't know, I guess this also kind of shows the, the I, like, is it a flawed system? Is, you know, Kickstarter a flawed system or are people just, you know, mindless sheep enough to, you know, throw that in? You know, just to throw in like a buck or something. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot of people just backing for a dollar, but. Even then. Hmm, seems crazy. Yeah, yeah, really. Guys, I think we're missing out on the the true money in the world. <laughs> yes. through, it's through Kickstarter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Making cake. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone loves cake, and then when we promise people that they're going to get some, we just say the cake is a lie, they get the reference, and everyone moves on with their day. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I like it. Yeah. All right. The next question on this list that I have here says cross-play squids audit. Crossplay. Squid's Odyssey is the first for Nintendo. Others to follow suit? Question mark. He says, "Yeah, Club considering it." It's coming mm-hmm. from J Money. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's- Squid's Odyssey. It um, if you buy it on the 3DS, you get it on the Wii U for free. That that kind of sounds something similar to what PlayStation did with um, PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale, mm-hmm. or I think Sly Cooper Thieves in Time did the same thing. It's like if you buy it on one platform, you get it for free on the other one. Mm-hmm. And um, and I think it's actually called crossplay. Honestly. Yeah. Huh. I, I've actually that's that's a good thing. What, what do your guys take on a crossplay thing? Well, whatever they, yeah, whatever they do with it, I think it needs to happen. And I, we've talked about it before on the Cupa Cast, or at least I've mentioned it. That I think Nintendo is trying to go that route because right now. It's probably a pain for them. They have to release, you know, they have to port like a virtual console game or some game to the 3DS. Then they have to do the same thing and port it to the Wii U because it's a different right. architecture. Right. Now, if they're using like a, you know, framework, you know, like if they're using Unity or the Nintendo web framework and the assets are basically the same, you know, so the graphics are kind of like on par with the 3DS on the Wii U, mm-hmm. then you know, that it probably makes it pretty easy for them. Um, but I hope it goes just beyond, like, you know, buying it and then you get a download code for the Wii U version. You know, I hope it's like, okay, you buy it, it's automatically downloaded on your 3DS when you buy it, and it's automatically downloaded on the Wii U as well. I do like that idea, especially with virtual console games. I feel like, uh, actually, I kind of feel like that's kind of a fair thing. If you buy it on one platform, it's available on the Wii U as well. Like, if you buy it on 3DS... Um, it should be, you know, legit, like almost linked to your, you know, Nintendo Network ID, and it's just just as downloadable as the other one. Because, like, what is the real, what's the, 
What's the biggest difference between the two? It's portability. You know, one you can take with you on the go. The other one, it's more tied to a larger TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But crossplay for me, it's a cool idea. It's financial. It's a financially savvy kind of idea, especially for the consumer. But to me, I feel like if you're doing that, then obviously your games, it's okay. But to convince people to check out one or the other, you're giving them this little free incentive as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just looking online. It looks like there is an update. Um, mm. That uh, it's not it's not going to be available for North America. You heard that, folks? Right here from the horse's mouth. Yeah. Uh, uh, some some person uh, says we really like this promotion and wish to uh, to make it happen for all gamers. Oh, this is the developer. But Nintendo of America cannot support this kind of promotion yet. Oh, okay. Maybe just not ready for it yet. Yeah. So, hmm. Well, well, that kind of solves that. Yeah, that, 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 that. <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess on the, this same lines, I don't know if you guys heard about Dragon Quest X, the MMORPG. Oh yeah. Um, mm-hmm. That three, uh, it's coming to 3DS. It's not, it's not announced here yet, but it's a streaming game or cloud-based game. Hmm. Well, there's no physical cartridge or anything you download. You just Kind of like on live. Hmm. You just got to connect to internet. It's MMORPG, so you got to connect to internet anyways. So there's yeah. really that argument of, well, I'm going to walk around with it. Well, you got to yeah. be connected to internet to play the game in the first place. So you yeah. just connect to the service, and you can play it through the cloud, basically. Huh. And you can play against other, according to this article, you can play against other versions, like the Android version. We use a you're not playing other just the other three DS people. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Although although it's true what you said, I do agree with that. With it being only you have to be connected with the internet, you don't have like a downloadable game or a physical yeah. game. Yeah, because I feel like when when I think three DS, I think obviously, you know, oh handheld, oh I can, you know, play it wherever I go. I don't have to worry about things like that. I mean that was the biggest cool that was the defining thing about the original Game Boy. It's oh I can take, you know, games wherever I want and I have a whole library of games in these little cartridges. Mm-hmm. So I feel like when you eliminate that, it's you know, it, it just kind of defeats the purpose of a mobile game, a uh, mobile platforming gaming like that that doesn't have, let's say, a uh, 3G or 4G network. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty slick, um, and that would that would be awesome if if you know future games took advantage of that. You wouldn't mm-hmm. have to like download a big car, you know, big game. Just download maybe a small little app that you know connects into the servers. Oh, even like that'd be perfect for demos. So not to worry about downloading oh, a whole bunch. Yeah, of demos yeah. And it's going. And like, well, think about the potential with that. You could, let's say, if it's if it's completely streaming, like let's say the assets and everything is just streaming the video, like mm-hmm. you know, on live. Then potentially you could be on the 3DS and actually have a demo of a Wii U game. Um, that you're playing on the 3DS. So you could potentially promote Wii U games or vice versa on a different platform, which would be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be cool. I think there are definitely a lot of, yeah, possibilities you can do with that. Yeah, and, you know, maybe something, you know, with Nintendo talking about smartphones and tablets, how they're coming up with some strategy for that, if they had some sort of a way where you could, you know tinker around or play around in some sort of demo and say, okay, now buy it on the Wii U or 3DS only available on this platform, that may get some of the smartphone people who are just poking around at it like, oh, yeah, I need a Wii U, I want this game. You know? Yeah. I don't know. Kind well, of a cool you, way to sell a product. Do you think Nintendo would do what Square is doing and create a game like this? Like a let's go Mario Minions game or something that they can release on multiple platforms? 3DS. Have an iPhone app, Android app, who can download and like play each other online from the mm-hmm. 3DS to the iPhone to the Android to whatever, mm-hmm. like Dragon Quest X. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really see Nintendo ever going that route. I feel like if it's not on a Nintendo product, then that's then that's as far as Nintendo will go. Yeah, they do seem pretty, you know, stubborn with that. Yeah. Which is good and bad, but... Uh, All right, it just depends on your preference of game and like how you look at it. Yeah. I could maybe see more demos or limited-type things like that, but 
like to have like a whole a whole game where someone could play it all on the iPhone or, or Android. Yeah. I think probably. Well, I don't mean like a. I'm not mean like a full fledged game. I mean something something like this where you have to be connected online playing mm. through a server. So it's it's not like I can be playing the game while I'm sitting. Well, I guess you could if you're at a meeting, mm-hmm. but <laughs> something where it kind of brings everyone together. Even though they want you to take a 3DS, they can charge five bucks for the game, ten bucks for the game on the App Store and reach 100, 200 million people. Yeah. Plus with the 3DS. It's not a full-fledged downloadable game. It's a game that you have to use the cloud-based. Maybe like a quick puzzle game or something. Yeah. I, I could see something like you know Mario vs. Donkey Kong working really well for that. You know, yeah. yeah. Sharing levels and... Uh, yeah, could be interesting. You know, even like a Mario Maker. A Mario Maker seems like it would be. Uh, that, that's gonna be so much fun. You know, I, when they announced it at E3, I was like, man, why couldn't they have this on the 3DS too? You know? Actually, I was just about to actually say, I was like, man, it'd be cool if they put that on there because I, I, you know, I feel like essentially you could do the exact same thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you and have, I mean, you, already, you already have the new Super Mario Brothers style on the 3DS. Right. You can easily go back, course, throw back to the original one. Mm-hmm. And then you can have all of your courses in 3D, you know, the stereoscopic 3D on the 3DS. Right. You share it, you know, you make it on the Wii U, and then you're like, oh, I want to play this in 3D. Play it on the 3DS. That's all right, Nintendo. You can take that idea if you're watching. We don't mind. You can take it. You can take <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, but the idea of having a, a cloud-based game like that, they can always use the defense. Well, it's technically not on any system. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, hey, you, you guys said you never released a game for the iPhone. Well, technically it's not on the iPhone. That's yeah. true. I, I, I could <laughs> That's see, clever. I could see them doing that, James, actually. You That's just get to the iPhone, all right, but it's technically not on the iPhone. Yeah, that's actually a really clever loophole. Yeah, because they, they could they could kind of market it like, uh, connect to the Nintendo. Yeah, it can just be a service. They can be go through the web browser and they log into something. Yeah. Connect to the Tendo Mushroom Kingdom Cloud or something. Yeah. Oh, oh, I like that. The Mushroom Kingdom Cloud. The like you do. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and they could name it whatever they want and say, hey, this is our new platform going forward, and here are the devices you can connect to this platform on. You right. Know, you like a digital platform, this cloud, cloud-based system. The Wii U will connect to it, 3DS, or whatever the new system, uh, new handheld or console is, and then... Oh yeah, and you can connect from from various smartphone devices if you'd like as well, as long as you connect to the Nintendo Universe platform. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I jack into that ma- matrix. Oh, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't be ashamed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no shame. <laughs> we here at Pure Nintendo have no shame. Well, yeah. maybe some of us. No shame. Yes. <laughs> I guess yeah. that could, interesting yeah. ideas, James. I like it. Yeah. I secretly work for anything that I will be. <laughs> uh, Full trade secret. That, that leads, I guess, to the next reasonable topic is the 3DS got a firmware update 8.0. Or am I making it? that up? 8.0? Yes. And that it was a big jump. Like, it was 7, and there was no, that I know of, there was no, like, 7 point. 0.0.1 type of thing. It kind of went from 7 to 8. And normally yeah. those big number jumps is something major, but Nintendo's like, oh, these are just minor fixes. <laughs> so they're obviously hiding something. The question is, what are they? Yeah. You don't do a major number jump for... For just the, just the heck of it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's something going on there, but I don't know. I'm going to have to update my 3DS soon. What? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I didn't see like what the uh, the size was, but I liked uh, you know James, one of our writers in um, Australia. He mentioned that 5.0 brought the sleep mode downloading to the eShop and the save data transfer tool, and then 6.0 allowed the save files for downloadable games and virtual console titles to be backed up to an SD card, and then the 7.0 introduced the Nintendo Network ID support. Mm-hmm. I think there have been some, James, the little updates, because that one was a while ago when they added the Nintendo Network ID. Yeah, that one was, actually. So I think I think they have done, like, some small little updates in between this and the 8.0, but, yeah, it seems weird that 
it, you know, from, from all appearances, it's not like a very large change. But, um, yeah, what were, some people were speculating about what it could be or, you know, laying the groundwork for cross by or, you know, something like that. What you're saying is Majora's Mask Remake confirmed. Yes. <laughs> so you're saying all of this, and that's all I'm getting from you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, all the, that's all the update is, just the whole remake. Yeah. Oh, E3, that was just like... Every, you were waiting every, for it. Yeah, yeah everybody, like, uh, when we were waiting for that uh, 3DS uh, developer roundtable, yeah. uh, there were, like, three people behind us who were like, it's Majora's Mask, it's Majora's Mask, it's Majora's Mask. It was not Majora's Mask. I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know if they would do a whole roundtable on Majora's Mask. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, we're just going to talk about when it was being made. No, we're not going to. No, it's not confirmed it's going to happen. Is it? We don't tell. We don't know. You, yeah. you, you've got the moon that you can throw down in Hyrule Warriors, but we, we're probably not working on it. God, no. Come on. That I feel like that. You don't just throw that in there. <laughs> God. That's that's a whole other rant, though. That's just, ugh. <laughs> Next time on the Koopa Cast. Yeah, no. Oh, that's what we should do at the end of these. We should have, like, some dramatic, oh, just... like, like lead in, you know, like they do for like twenty four or some some show. Like next time on Koopa Cast, choo, choo, choo. Yeah, Tristan <laughs> survive. Yeah, just Tristan survive. He's gonna be like, what? What are you doing? What are you talking about? <laughs> and he just goes and probably not. Music, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on the next exciting episode of Koopa Cast Z. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason, I'm always like thrown into like a dire, terrible situation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Let's do it. Yeah. Or, All right, let's do it. Yeah, cut and print and dry. Yeah. <laughs> but what do you? But what do you guys? Do you guys think that the update though? Back to that is do. You, do you, I I feel like also yeah it's got to be something major. But the thing is I can't think of anything too major at the moment. Yeah. Oh, or could they have maybe the quick start feature similar to that of the? Well, actually, no, they probably wouldn't because right when you turn on the 3ds, it kind of already is a quick start feature. Yeah. It, it would almost. In. Yeah, it'd almost have to be something that they could enable, you know, later on. Like, the update gets installed, and then, like, they just release something on eShop or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. I almost think it's got to be some sort of, like, maybe some app or something that needs 8.0. Like, maybe Nintendo TV is coming to the 3DS. I don't know. Or, um, I don't know. So, something like that. Maybe more, you know... Uh, Someone actually mentioned, I think, on our Twitter today that all of the DSi Wear games are listed on the 3DS eShop now. Which, I'm not sure if they were there before. It seems like they were, but um, he was saying that all of the DSi Wear games are listed on the eShop now. But yeah, those are separate updates, though. Yeah, because like the eShop, the eShop is essentially like going to a website. Yeah. Um, you know, it's essentially yeah. loading some content there, so... Downloading an update isn't, you know, essentially going to change that. Um, I've only downloaded one DSi game ever. That yeah. was Shantae. That was fun. Ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know, maybe, let's see, tomorrow's Thursday, right? Nintendo download? Yep, yeah, tomorrow's Thursday. I don't know, maybe, maybe we'll find out something tomorrow. Maybe it'll say something about the new update. You'll guys find out sooner than me. Because it's only six up here. Yeah, that's right. I'm. Or maybe they'll do some like weird Nintendo Direct like first thing in the morning. Sometimes they've <laughs> done that for. Then they do like a Mario Kart Eight Direct that was like released just on YouTube, their YouTube channel. Like. Uh, yeah, I think they did that once. Yeah. They did another one like that too. Uh, the Tomodachi Life one was like that. They just like here you go. <laughs> yep, and there it is. Okay. That's right. I never watched that because I didn't. Um, I didn't really get into Tomodachi Life. I didn't. I never. There wasn't really enough of it to get me hyped. You should. You should wa watch it. It's. It's hilarious. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's. It's worth it. Uh, if. If. If nothing else, just for the chuckles. Oh okay. But. It's. It's pretty zany. Oh yeah. Okay. What else do we got on the menu? Uh, I guess the last one here is Nintendo Request Extension for Eternal Darkness Trademark. Mm. All right, now, Eternal Darkness, that was a major, Was a, it was a horror-based game for the GameCube, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. See, I never played it, and I love playing horror games. Uh, I like a good scare and all. 
because yeah, I just I just like that. And in a game that's scary, you can control your fate rather than that stupid person in every sc- scary movie that you're always like, don't go down that hallway. You're one down that you're dead. And yeah. This one, it's like I'm going down that hallway, but I can run the other way. Mm-hmm. Um, was it good? You guys play it? Uh, yeah, I, I played it. It was it was pretty good. Um, yeah, James, you played it, right? Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Did you play it with the lights off? Oh, oh yeah, it's, it's already rolled. Okay. <laughs> Is it like I, super rare? I, I love the Nintendo logo at the beginning too. It's like in this blood red, crazy splatter. Mess. Yeah, well, not not splatter, but um, I'm sure the logo would be just being really cool. Like the even like the sound effects. That was another cool thing about it. It, it was using the surround sound, which I think was just the 5.1 Pro Logic 2 or something. Same thing that we had, but uh, I had surround sound at the time. So playing that, I was like, "Ooh, this is pretty cool." Um, but it used the surround sound pretty well. Like you would start to go insane, and you'd hear voices like echoing around. And, you know, uh, like parts of your body would start falling off as you were going insane. Oh, really? Um, you'd you'd walk down a hallway, and the hallway would get smaller. Like like the the door. Like you're like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna run to that door, and it like keeps getting smaller. And then you realize the door is like four inches tall when you get to it. There was another one where it just kept going, like it was like an infinite hall. Um, there was another one where the uh, the walls would start bleeding. Um, so there was all sorts of crazy stuff where you're like, "What the heck is going on?" Is it bad that I'm I'm already looking on Amazon? I'm like looking up the games. Like, how much is this game? <laughs> no, no, it's it's definitely a cult classic. It's. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna have to maybe maybe future live stream whenever that happens. Mm-hmm. It's one of the more interesting Nintendo third-party exclusives, or well, maybe not third-party. Silicon Knights was kind of buddy buddy with them, but yeah. Now I guess back to things. So they're trying to reacquire the rights to it. No, well they've never lost them. They just keep renewing. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. it isn't really, like, I was excited when they did this like three times ago or something. Yeah, I know. We do it every six months or something now. Yeah, when when I saw that's on the agenda, I was like, I think this is fairly old. They did it it again recently. I think they got to do it every like six months now or something until. Yeah. Something like that. That's how the copyright works. Until until they use it or whatever. Yeah. Which hopefully maybe the sign of them keep on uh, constantly renewing it could be a good sign of that. Yeah. Yeah, so in 2013, in March, they renewed it. Um, so that's that's really the last time. But about every year, they got to renew it. Yeah. Yeah, and it looks like here, Nintendo has 36 months to produce something related to it, or they lose it, or whatever, you know. There's all sorts of stuff like that. But. I, well, um... I know definitely I'm going to be looking out for this game. I'd like to check it out, and I have the strong feeling after I play it and beat it, I'm going to jump on the excitement band, the hype train with you guys of, oh, man, I really hope they do another one. Mm-hmm. I feel like Nintendo needs to kind of produce some horror genre games, and I guess that's not even necessarily a, oh, to bring in the hardcore demographic. I think, it's, I think it shows that when Nintendo tries it, they actually do a good job succeeding with it, i.e., again, Eternal Darkness being such a cult classic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Nintendo is just such a, you know, quality game maker just all around. So, right. You know, um, so just having them experiment with different genres, I think, is just better for everybody. Like, hey, you know, they they made a, a sports game, you know, a realistic sports game, or they made a realistic racing game, or whatever, and you're like, oh, okay, cool. I wonder how Nintendo does with it. Yeah. But I think like most people would be interested to see what they come up with. I'd be down. Mm-hmm. I'd be down. Yeah. So I don't, you know, I don't, I don't look much, you know, too much into it. You know, the yeah. extension on it. They may be, wor- of, be working on a game. They may not be. It may just be. See it to believe it, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. In yeah, the past, I mean, when they've done stuff like that, like uh, Geist was another example where it was a very unique game. Um, was more gritty, darker. You know, you play as this, you know disembodied, you know, spirit or whatever, and you're possessing all these people or inanimate objects as you go through the game is essentially a first-person shooter. Right. That you play as a ghost, but 
Um, you know, it didn't sell very well for them. But that sucks. Every now and then they experiment with these things. So, mm. um, someone was telling me about another game that was very similar to Geist. I think. Um, was it the prequel called Polter? No. Uh, there was a game called. Uh, that was funny. Uh, what was it? Um, uh, I remember now. Oh, Dishonored. Um, oh man, Dishonored was that was a really fun game. Now in Dishonored, you could like jump into people, right? Um, you know, like possess oh, people. Man, like, you, you yeah, blink. I think. Yeah, at one point, I believe you could do that. You could possess someone. I never bought that part because I just never used it. But yeah, that was one of the abilities. You could possess people from a distance and make them work for you or something like that. Yeah. So there, and there's been some other games that kind of utilize that gameplay mechanic. I remember on the on the Wii U, I actually have guys. Um, on the Wii U. Not on the Wii U, sorry. No. Game, uh, GameCube. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see my Super phone. Nintendo, the Cinto Wii GameCube pad. Oh, yeah, there, there's Eternal Darkness, by the way. There's yeah, Eternal Darkness, by the way. Let me just dangle this in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how you missed Eternal Darkness. I have no idea. Horror, horror, horror video games. I do love me some horror video games. I do. Oh, uh, Justin, Justin, I bet, I bet you, should, you should get Katie to play it. I bet she'd love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so here's Geist. And I yeah, I thought it was rated teen, but it is rated mature. Nice. Uh, yeah, I, I remember seeing um, promos for that. Yeah, it's it's very, very interesting. Yeah, my first M-rated game was on the GameCube, or the first one I ever owned by myself, and it was Resident Evil 4, and that game was pretty scurry. Yeah, yeah. At least at the beginning it was. You've had a lot of these, you know, types of games. So. Yeah. Okay. We need we need to see like a real revitalization of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess that's all the questions. Yeah. The actual that. teacher that had. <laughs> that's kind of a that's kind of a short Cooper cast. Or are we stopping now, or do we just no. make up our own topics now? We have our own topics, so we can talk about what games we're playing. We need to talk about that. Yeah. What games have you guys been playing? Give me a moment. Oh, I'm, I've been replaying Mario & Luigi Dream Team on hard mode. Ooh, nice. Yeah, and the two biggest differences are, of course, you take more damage. Um, you can't restart. Like, in the original one, it's like, oh, you lost in the battle? Oh, you can restart back at the beginning of it. And that was an interesting feature for me, but um, the other one that's huge is um, you can only carry up to ten items of something. So, like, you can only have 10 mushrooms, 10 super mushrooms. You can't, like, in the other one, I remember I had, like, 50 of them. So you're kind of, like, limited to how much you can hold. But, um, yeah, that's what I've been playing recently. Let me guess, you guys have been playing Mario Kart over and over again. It's so good. So much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been playing lots of Mario Kart. Um, what have I been playing recently? Oh, I've, I've been playing some Mario Golf World Tour on 3DS. You need oh, yeah. to play still. Yeah, James, we need to play online sometime. Yeah. Um, yeah, mostly that. Mario Kart 8. Um, that's about it. Oh, I have been playing some of the Wii Sports, uh, Wii Sports Club Baseball and Boxing. Uh, I need to download those whenever I get my stuff up here. I got, I got a lot to download. How is Wii Sports Club Baseball? Baseball, it's awesome. Uh, boxing, not so much, but... Um, the baseball I've been really impressed with. Uh, I remember in the first Wii Sports baseball, you could actually pitch by throwing, right? Or you right. could, you know, use the Wii remote. And like, I think you hold like the A button or the like B a slider button, slider or something, or or both of them. Yeah. Or if you didn't hold anything, it was a pass ball or whatever. Yeah. Um, which which was pretty cool. But in this one, there's actually more detail in the pitches you can do. And you use the gamepad, and you're, you, know, you kind of move it around. And it on the gamepad itself, it has the strike zone kind of zoomed in. And so you just kind of, it'll tell you, like, what's a strike and what's not. And you're like, okay, I want to go just out of the strike zone. And, you know, pitch a fastball or... Um, beam, beam your friend in the head. Yeah. You can, uh, you can choose to pitch, like, you know, really slow or really fast, uh, depending on when you... You basically press the press and hold the A button. The longer you hold it, 
um, this little meter fills up, like this circular meter. Mm -hmm. if it, when it gets to the top and you let go right at the top, it's a perfect pitch, or at least you know a very fast pitch, um, at least for the fastball. If you're doing like the, uh, I think it's the splitter that, that dives down, um, if you're doing that one, a perfect pitch is like, just has a ton of break on it. Um, and then you can choose like where to throw it. You can throw it high, high up uh, above the strike zone, down low, left, you know, inside, outside. So there's really a lot of detail to it. And I played online and there's, there's quite a bit of like really good pitchers, you know, people that are like throwing you some stuff that's like just outside. It's really hard to, Oh yeah, you know, to lay, lay off the pitches um, uh, when you're the hitter. But uh, oh, and the you can also field in this one. So if they hit like a line drive, it'll automatically like go to your second baseman or someone if if one of your infielders can catch it, and it'll show you this little circle on the game pad, and you have to move it to line up the circle with the ball. Kind of like that uh, when they first demoed the Wii U. Yes. Yes. So it's kind of bringing that finally to fruition, and, nice. and it's it's really cool, especially like you know, like catching fly balls. Like I caught this one ball that was in foul territory. Um, there's really a lot of variety to it. Um, so yeah, I liked it, and then I love doing the home run derby with it. It's pretty cool. It makes you think nice. you're good at baseball. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, James? What have you been playing? I'm playing Transformers: Rise of the Dark Spark, or whatever it's called. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Hey. How, how how has it been? I, I know you were saying the Wii U version wasn't as good, but the the 3DS version have you played? Um, yeah, well, I'll start with the Wii U version. I hated myself and everything for about the first 30 minutes. Uh -huh. It got better, but then I realized like they they don't know what the game. Is like it almost kind of reminds me of like a poor man's Halo because there's a lot of this kind of like a flood and there's a whole bunch of weird little. It kind of feels like a Halo game, but it's yet a kids Transformer game. So right. Like you want to be this big uh, shooter, but it's a kids game. It kind of just gets lost in the whole thing. But going to the 3DS version is made by WayForward, and it's actually a turn-based game, which I didn't know. It was. Huh. It's fully turn-based, not just, like even your movements. So you have a grid, like, hey, um, Bumblebee can only move here in this turn. And huh. although his prop can only move here in this turn, and once you move all your characters, your turn's over, then the enemies move. So it's like Fire Emblem. Yeah, Fire Emblem yes. or, or Advance Wars. Or, yeah, yeah, so like, I, I didn't know it was like that as I played. So that's, I'm usually not a big fan of those, but it's really not that bad. It works... Well, so far I've played that much. Nice. Hmm, nice. Yeah, it was hmm. a cool take on it that they did. With it. Yeah, I like when they experiment with different genre, you know, or different games and different genres. Like, hey, we've always had a Transformers game that's kind of a driving third-person shooter yeah. game. Yeah. Like, so it's cool they're, you know, getting out of that or just some platforming to something yeah. different. Hmm. I was going into it. I didn't know. I was like, no, is it a platformer? Or is it an RPG, but yeah. you, know, you still move freely, but it doesn't turn turn based into battles. But no, it's a whole. It's. Hmm. Uh, speaking of games, uh, did you guys ever download Shovel Knight? Uh, I haven't yet, actually. James, um, I haven't had time yet. No. No. Yeah. I've had yeah, such a backlog. I would. I've been just waiting. And I was like, yeah. well, I'll probably pick it up sometime soon. I've been debating. I think I might hold out for, until I get my Wii U up here and download it for that. Yeah. Yeah, I figured I'd probably rather have it on the Wii U. I mean, it'd be cool to have it portable, but um, yeah, at that point, it's like, what are you charging? For? What, like, what are you paying for? And that's the portability of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Indeed. Yeah. Any games you want to be playing? Do oh, what? Smash Brothers. Um, Smash Brothers. <laughs> yeah. What was the question? What game do you want to be playing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Star Fox for the Wii U. Next question. <laughs> I I'm just go up. Oh, oh, New Zelda. New Zelda. Mm -hmm. Nope, too late. You got Smash Bros. That's all you get. <laughs> yeah, you get. Only one. Yeah. I guess I'll ask one of our poll questions. Like, we, are you going to... I don't really don't like this question. 
So I think it's a no-brainer. Are you going to buy the 3DS version of Smash Brothers or the Wii U, or are you going to double dip? Both. Double dip, dude. You have to double dip, in my opinion. Like, they're the same game, but they're two different games. Yeah. To be honest. So. I'll say this. The bigger question, who here is going to buy all the Amiibos? <laughs> I'm going to try to. I'm going to end up... That's going to... Uh, gonna kill me. I got my amiibos. They're not really amiibos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're kind of like amiibos, you know. Yeah, and that, those things are going to be too, too awesome. Uh-huh. Well. Is that it? Uh, did we win? I think we did win, yeah. I think we did win. I'll ask you my, I forgot to ask you my starting question. Oh, starting. Oh, that's right. We didn't have one. Begin with this. Um, so with Comic Con happening in about two weeks or three weeks, what are you most excited to find out more about or hear about? Mm. Mm. The new, the new Batman, Superman, or Justice League, or Star Wars. That is all. I hope we get a trailer of Batman Superman just so I can finally... Because I've had friends ask me, so what do you think about it? And I went, well, ultimately, yeah, part of me at first doesn't like it, but I can't judge a book by its cover. I need to at least see it first and see how it's done. Yep. Then I'll judge it. Do you think yes. we'll have a trailer? Because it's still two years. Yeah, it's still two years out. That's a crazy thing. Yeah, but yeah, well, I'm an optimist. <laughs> I hope so. Like, I, that, that would steal the show. Uh, I feel like I feel like that would at least give fans something to you know tide them over, give them like faith. Yeah, I'm sure we'll have artwork at least or something or some more screens of. You like the one where Superman's uh, hugging Batman? Yeah. <laughs> Sad Batman. <laughs> Wait, the over the shoulder ones? Or... Yeah, the the one where he's picking them up. It looks like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, I think the first time I'm more excited for. TV. Like Gotham? Well, not, not really Gotham. Um, for me, uh, Arrow and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. ended yeah. very strong. Both of them did. Mm-hmm. So it'll be cool and, to see and the new Arrow. Flash. The new Flash series. The new Flash. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, it's, the age, it's the age of comic book TV shows. Exactly. Yeah, for, it seems like it. Actually, you know, uh, you know, speaking of, I guess, that show Gotham, are you guys interested in that show? It seems like it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah uh, I'll cool. probably I'll probably check it out. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I love it. Enough to, I've just seen like brief little teasers. Like, uh, yeah, we've been watching the new Twenty Four. I know, I know, crazy American stuff. So. Yeah. Uh, hey, look on the look on the cool side though. Keep keep for Sutherland. <laughs> wait, is Keeper Sutherland play Jack Bauer? Keeper Sutherland is Jack Bauer. That's, That's right. Like, he is. <laughs> That's right. Um, well, he, he's voicing uh, Big Boss in the next Metal Gear game. Eh? Ah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I never got into 24. I never watched it. Yeah. It's okay. Have, have you watched Arrow? Oh, yeah, I watch Arrow. I'm behind, though. I've the seen last season three one. episodes were awesome. I've, mm-hmm. seen, I've seen season one and two. I haven't seen any of... No, actually, or have I only seen season one? I can't remember. You find them. Find them and, and watch uh, them. Winter is coming? <laughs> That, did sounds you, like, that sounds did like you guys watch, Did you guys watch uh, Do what? Agents of Shield? I I haven't seen any. No. Of I don't have cobble. Uh, trying to trying to think. Eh. Okay, this isn't giveaway. Um, it's very boring. Well, it's not so good, and it gets boring until after Winter Soldier. Because uh, they deal. I see. With, I haven't even seen that one yet. Deal with the fallout of Winter Soldier. And that's when they kind of they turn the show up to the producer says up to eleven, because they're building all the characters up to that point. And then after all the characters are built, when the soldier happens, so the team deals with that fallout. So the last like four or five episodes are actually really cool. Thanks. I have to check them out. Yeah, yeah, they've got the whole season out now, so yeah. Hopefully they put Winter Soldier on Netflix soon, because yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Thanks for spoiling the title for me, James. <laughs> <laughs> now I know there's a soldier and, and possibly and maybe... the time of year. But... <laughs> what do you mean Captain America's in it? <laughs> <laughs> Done. 
America has a captain? Oh. <laughs> Not in this country. <laughs> I guess that's a wrap for this. Yeah. This, this week's Cooper Cast. It's been fun. I was actually excited to be three of us. No offense to everyone else. No. Yeah. <laughs> like three of us would be fun. I like Tristan yeah. and Justin. Yeah. Oh, you, you got everyone. He's just saying that. Out, that could follow on camera. <laughs> well, this, the second this is over, he's gonna. They're gonna both just like, just call me names, things yeah. like that. It's gonna be awful. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're swell guys. <laughs> the best friends. <laughs> and you guys just wait till Mario Kart. I've been practicing at the local Game Stops. I've been getting first place under hundred and C C track. <laughs> That's right. Which is I, like, love how, I, know, I, I love how a like, conversation went with that. I, he, he told me that on channel. I was like, what, what difficulty is that? Like, under CC? Or whatever. He goes, yeah. yeah. Just to play. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I know. I saw And then you get past there. <laughs> oh, God. I, I need to. That, that's, I've already told myself, once, I'm, once I know they're like being packaged up and they're being sent up to me, that day I'm going to go out and buy Mario Kart 8 and I'm just going to have it yeah. sit there. Mm-hmm. And a, a new hard drive, so the second I get it, I can do the update, mm-hmm. format the hard drive, and get on it. Mm-hmm. And then we'll march. file it. Have a, I'm sorry? You have your marching orders now. Dude, uh, dude I've, I've got everything all planned out for that. <laughs> I'll be ready. For, I hope you guys are ready. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you for joining us, and we'll mm-hmm. see you for episode 48. We should do something big for 50. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we should. It's going to be in August or something. Yeah, three more episodes. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's, we'll let's think of something it. special. Mm-hmm. Maybe Thanks a giveaway. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe I will do the pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>